Okay, we're back. Uh, unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties for which we apologize. Uh, so I think we're going to basically kind of start at the top again. Uh, so again, I'm here with John McMillan, a PhD student at West Virginia University, where he's studying uh, kind of Civil War era history under Dr. Jason Phillips. And John's going to orient us on the battlefield uh, today and talk a bit about the preliminary movements that then preface the assaults they're going to kick off in this part of the field um, in the late afternoon of July the 2nd. Now, where we are positioned geographically, we're right off Confederate Avenue, which runs through the heart of the National the Gettysburg National Park. We're located along Seminary Ridge. And just for a moment before I turn it over to John, we're going to look off in the distance. And to my right, we see to the far end, Big Round Top. And as Pat pans slightly to the left, we can see Little Round, little round Top, upon which there's some monumentation. To our foreground, is the Sherfy Peach Orchard, the Emmitsburg Turnpike, and then finally off to my left is the Sherfy Farm. That's a distance, I would guess, five, 600 yards, John? Yeah, I would say. From where we stand, and then, John, bring it back here. And then beyond that, of course, um, is Cemetery Ridge, which is another kind of 600 yards beyond of where we are, so maybe 12, 1300 yards from our current position. Uh, but John's going to talk a bit today about Samuel Johnston, his reconnaissance, and how that uh, in turn will start to shape the action on the afternoon of July the second. So, all right, John. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about a little bit about Samuel Johnston's uh, reconnaissance on the morning of July second. Uh, reconnaissance uh, during the Civil War and all the way up through uh, even today in the modern military is is. Uh, very important. The means, the ways you're doing this is obviously going to change uh, throughout history. Uh, but during the Civil War, uh, maps were a commodity, uh, and so you couldn't convey all the information that you needed off a map. So an officer um, uh, would send out somebody uh, to do this or multiple people in uh, several different directions to do this. Uh, and this is what's going to happen at Gettysburg. And, and maybe if I can just stop you there for a second, and I think this is a really important moment to pause and something to think about because, again, we tend not to think of this in the 21st century as we understand these fields so well. For many Civil War era officers, of course, this is unfamiliar ground. They have kind of bits and pieces of information that they've gotten um, through maybe sc uh, spies and scouts in some instances, sympathetic civilian audiences and others, um, enslaved African Americans if they're down south, um, or um, it's kind of unfolding in, in real time for officers who have an understanding of the topography. So the roles these officers are going to play are absolutely critical in trying to understand the terrain and where the men are going to be positioned. Right, correct. Yeah, and, it's, and it kind of goes without saying how important this is because the, the daily objectives of a campaign uh, or the battle as it, uh, it unfolds is going to be based on the, the information that these reconnaissance officers are going to give. Uh, so that's going to be uh, important for these reconnaissance officers to be truthful uh, and to be able to kind of clearly and concisely uh, and exactly uh, report back what they've seen uh, and what they know and the information they're able to gather. So Robert E. Lee, for example, is going to do this in Mexico uh, during the Southern Mexico campaigns uh, under Winfield Scott, uh, and he's going to do it um, extremely well. Uh, so on the morning of uh, July 2nd, uh, Robert E. Lee is going to send out uh, Captain Samuel uh, Johnston. Uh, Johnston had uh, been trained as an engineer before the war. Uh, he was 30 years old in 1863. Uh, and throughout the war, uh, he had a good record. He uh, was lieutenant, uh, became a lieutenant in the 6th Virginia Cavalry in 1861. Uh, then he served as a volunteer uh, aide-de-camp for Jeb Stewart. Uh, and then after that, he's going to be assigned uh, to, as an engineer uh, to Longstreet staff. And as you've noted, he has a really stellar service record up to this right. point Right, he's going to have a good service record. He had done these kind of things before uh, the Gettysburg uh, campaign. Longstreet uh, is going to single him out in his reports mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, Second Manassas campaign and during the Maryland campaign. Uh, and then in, uh, at Fredericksburg, he's going to help uh, place Confederate entrenchments. And then at Chancellorsville, um, he's also uh, going to be able to uh, gain information on Union Army uh, wagons and camps uh, and these type of things. Uh, so he's, Johnston's going to be a proven reconnaissance mm -hmm. officer. He's totally capable to go out and do what Lee has asked him to do uh, on the morning of July 2nd. Uh, so he's going to be called uh, around uh, to Lee's headquarters before uh, dawn on July 2nd. Uh, and he's going to be asked uh, to do a reconnaissance on the enemy's left, uh, which is going to be 
uh, at the time, which they think uh, doesn't extend as far as, as the two round tops that Jim uh, pointed out earlier. Um, and so Lee asked him to make the report and then to report back to him as soon as possible. Uh, and so uh, Johnson is going to report after the war. He's going to write after the war that Lee never asked him to uh, kind of find a route on which the army could move around the enemy's left, but more or less just ascertain where the left flank um, uh, of the enemy is. And, and this is critical, too, because, of course, flanks are going to uh, expose essentially an enemy's end of the line. So if you turn the flank during the Civil War period, that's critical to enveloping that line and trying to collapse it. So Lee's asking, has a pretty tall order here that he's asking. Correct, yeah. So uh, so Johnson's going to set off. He's going to set off with uh, uh, Longstreet's uh, senior, one of his engineering officers, uh, John Graham Clark, uh, and then he's going to have an escort of three or four men. And they're going to work their way uh, from roughly in the vicinity of the, the Lutheran Seminary um, around uh, down the Fairfield Road towards Black Horse Tavern. They're going to come down the Black Horse Tavern Road, uh, which is kind of immediately um, behind the, uh, the camera, kind of the direction me and Jim are facing. To our west. Yeah, to our west, uh, west of Seminary Ridge. He's going to kind of run along uh, Willoughby Run. Uh, he's going to cross the creek uh, on the Black Horse Tavern Road, um, and he's going to come up. Uh, on uh, the Millerstown Road, and some of this is, is the exact route is unknown, but uh, generally speaking, that's the direction he's going to come. Uh, he's going to come up on uh, uh, on the top of Seminary Ridge, and he's going to be able to have this view basically that we uh, that we have uh, today with the Round Tops and the Peach Orchard uh, and the Sherfy Farm. Uh, and he's going to uh, report back to Lee uh, that he was able to work his way. Um, across Seminary Ridge, across the Emmitsburg Road, and on top of, of uh, the Round Tops, where he said he had a commanding view uh, and that there were no uh, federal troops anywhere in that area. Uh, as he does start to work his way back, he's going to run into some uh, some federal uh, cavalry troopers in the road. So he's, Buford's men, I believe, is uh, yes, early enough on the so. second. Right. So Buford's men have moved to the south end of the field. He's going to encounter some of them. He's going to work his way slowly back uh, to the seminary. Uh, area where he's going to report back to Lee uh, in Longstreet's and A.P. Hill's presence, uh, and he's going to be able to trace his route on a map uh, that Lee has, uh, that he worked his way to the south end of the field, there were no Federals in the in the area, uh, and that he believes that he can uh, guide Longstreet's Corps there later in the day. Uh, and as we know, that's going to become the plan. Um, uh, Longstreet is going to move to the south end of the field. He's going to try to work up basically uh, from south to north, generally speaking, of uh, astride the Emmitsburg Road to try to roll up, as we talked about earlier, the left flank of the of the Union Army. Uh, so as uh, Johnston's going to be assigned to guide uh, McClaws and Hood's division, uh, Longstreet's going to um, stay in the rear with Hood uh, and kind of put uh, the responsibility, you could say, onto Johnston to guide them there. Uh, and as when McClaws' uh, division, who is first, uh, pops out on Seminary Ridge, uh, they're going to start to see Federals uh, forming uh, in the Peach Orchard, which is going to be Dan Sickles' corps that has, of course, moved forward. Uh, and Johnson's going to write after the war into a, in a letter to McClaws that this is going to be the first time that he had seen Federals uh, other than the, the, the cavalry troopers that morning uh, in this vicinity. Uh, and so from there, um, that's going to be when McClaws and Hood are going to have to countermarch, and, and you get into all the, the controversies of is Longstreet dragging his foot or not. Um, and then they're going to be able to redeploy and, and start their attack. So I think the, the important part of this, uh, again, Jim talked about this, is how uh, critical reconnaissance is during the Civil War uh, and how uh, important the role of the natural environment, the geographic features, uh, the terrain is, uh, and how uh, something like a small rise can, can greatly alter the way a battle uh, plays out. And you see this time and again in various battlefields across the war. So Okay. Jim? Well, Thank you so much, John. We really appreciate it. This is uh, John's one segment, so I'm going to go ahead and shake yep. your hand and thank Thanks, you for Jim. your time yeah. today. And thank you all. Uh, we're going to start back in a couple minutes where we'll talk about Barksdale's Brigade and their assaults uh, on the afternoon of July the 2nd. So thank you, and thanks, thanks. thanks to John.